Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, finally getting around to a sheet metal video. I haven't done sheet metal stuff in a while on camera. Uh, I still do a bunch of it, but not too much I show anymore. Uh, this is a buck for a, uh, a fender well. Uh, this is going in a... Yeah, I'm not sure of the year, but this is going to be a custom Mustang build that, uh, that a guy's doing. So there is the... Uh, let's see what side this is. That's the left. And from this point, he made the buck for me. He fit that, so so we know that fits in where he's got to go. Then I just took some uh, painter's masking paper and made a pattern. I just got some push pins in there. And you can see areas like this. There's going to be a lot of shrinking. And then by the time you get down here, there's not much shrinking at all. And a little bit through the top in this area. A little bit over here, quite a bit of shrinking in this area. And then again, we come down into nothing. Now, we got to be conscious of our highlight line, which you have to kind of feel your way through there. So we don't want our shrinks to come past the highlight line. It'll look funny. So you can see i got to add three inches that way. I gotta add seven inches down that way, three inches that way, and, uh, and it's gotta come down seven on this side. So, uh, just kind of fold the paper and, and see where the tucks are, and that's where your shrinks are gonna go. And that'll get that, uh, that uh, sheet metal to start, you know, rolling over like this. Uh, we're gonna do this on a power hammer, and I'll try and get you some footage. Uh, don't have anybody around to really film. It's kind of hard to film when I'm on a power hammer, but I'll try and get some footage. And um, we're going to take the pattern off, add our dimensions that need to go on there, and uh, cut a piece of sheet metal out. Okay guys, I'm just getting a major shrinking done on these right now. Coming in through here, gathering up all the material. Uh, I just made my slits. 
on the bottom because the shrink is going to stop somewhere in here I haven't gone all the way yet and then we'll just take this edge and fold it over there won't need much shrinking on that so I had to release it from there this is going to have an inch and a quarter we'll come down an inch and a quarter cut the rest of this out and bend a flange on that um, and uh, and then the rest of this we're just going to leave hanging wild and then fit them in the car um, and, and then he can mark them and I can cut them where they need to be but um, a lot of shrinking this is 18 gauge material uh, I know a lot of guys like to use 19 gauge 20 gauge uh, some guys like to use 22 gauge uh, this is a, a full 18 gauge so it takes a little bit longer to shrink uh, this is just my second round of shrinking and I haven't planished anything out yet but uh, it's coming along pretty nice you can see it's starting to come up and uh, it's just a matter of shrinking and test fitting and shrinking and test fitting so uh, we'll give a measurement over here and see how thick how much we gathered uh, when we're when we're getting closer and um, like I said this is 18 gauge 47 uh, 47 thousandths thick and we'll see what the the major shrinks are so we'll just keep fitting that buck to it and keep tickling it along and uh, until we get it to fit the buck perfectly hey guys I got the the right side done this is the left buck and front is to my right here and again I made another paper pattern and the critical thing I want you to see here is this black line this is what you would call the highlight line and when we're shrinking we want to keep our shrinks consistent and not go past this line if, if this is wavy like this because you shrunk too deep it, it won't reflect right it'll look funny you need a definite line um, it, it looks best for your eye so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you on the power hammer the shrinks I've got a, a small piece and I'm going to show you um, you don't want to go past that line so even if you go up to it you're still going to be past it I'm going to show you what I mean on a power hammer I'm going to try and get you some close up shots there but keep in mind your highlight line and that's right where it's going to start to curve so right there on the buck and then you kind of transfer that down in both ways and, and don't go past that or your piece is going to look funny now I finished the the other side and I've got some pictures I'm going to try and get some pictures inserted into the video right around now so you can see the finished right side uh, I'll show you the piece I got cut out for the left and then I'll take a smaller piece and show you um, the shrinking dies and how they come up to your highlight line Okay guys, here is the cutout for the left side. You can see my line here, and I don't want to go past that line. And you can see how big the piece is next to me. This is a very big piece to handle. Um, when I start shrinking, I'll get that guy folded up like that. And it is hard to, to do such a big piece like this, but it is possible. And uh, you saw a little bit of that on the right side. I, I got some footage. Um, but it is a big piece to start with. So to show you the shrinking up close, I'm going to use a smaller piece. And uh, we'll get set up for that now. Okay guys, there is a shrink. Now I took the shrink just shy of the line. I hope you can see that okay. And you can see how far it affected. It went by our line. 
got to be conscious of where you sh stop your shrink. I'm going to do another one next to it and I'm going to stop way out here. We want this to be above our black line. Okay, so be careful when you're shrinking. You don't go too far. Let's send another shrink in there. Okay, now I set that one back out again. I like to stop a little bit shy of my highlight line. And then when I'm over on the other side, uh, planishing it out and stuff, I kind of blend that right in. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a couple. When you're shrinking, you have to go all the way in, halfway in. Most of the shrinking is going to take place out here, so you can spend a lot of time out here with shallow shrinks to get that to roll right over. I'm going to put a couple in there and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, you see that's going to start to roll right over. I came all the way in, halfway in, shallow. Same thing here. That's basically how you have to work the panel. There'll be a lot of shrinking out here. Okay guys, it's still working on that little sample piece. I threw a couple of shrinks in here and um, it's easier to show on this piece than the big one. It's so hard to handle and film at the same time. Um, so now we're over on this side here and this is going to do our smoothing out. Now um, I make my own shrink dies. Uh, I have some very aggressive ones that will do heavy material or multiple stacks of uh, 18, 19 gauge. Uh, and I have this one I have in there now that I use just on single pieces of 18 gauge. The nicer you can get your shrinks, the less planishing you're going to have to do. I see some guys with massive shrink dies and they just mangle up the metal and then they got to spend a lot of time planishing it out. And I see guys with too small a shrink and they got to put so many shrinks in there they start to tear the metal. So the shrink dies are critical. Uh, like I say, I have uh, I've made many sets of my own, and uh, and you can see we're not too badly mangled up here. I'm just gonna quick run it through some. Uh, I got a flat upper, and a uh, I don't believe in full radius dies. Uh, all of my bottom dies have a flat spot. Uh, there's some guys that preach you gotta have a full radius. I don't believe that. It messes up the metal a little bit further. Uh, so I have a little bit of a flat spot on my die, and then it's radio, you know, it's relieved on the sides. And we'll go, uh, <clears throat> and we'll smooth this out now. And it's the same process I'm going to do on that big piece. It's just easier to show you on this one.
Okay guys, just a little bit. It's very smooth now. You can see we're deep on that shrink. Remember that's where we went below the line. You gotta figure out where your shrink dice shrink to and then do your calculation how far you need to stay away from your line. But you can see, like I can feel that. And I know when this goes over further, straighten that out. Okay, when that starts going over, we're right at our line there. We're deeper than our line there, and we're right on our line here. Don't mess yourself up by running too deep with your shrink die. Make sure you take a sample piece and see how far your die goes, and don't let it go past that line. That's going to be a nice, I mean this is just free drawn on there, but you could follow any line you want. If the line went up and down, you can still follow it with your shrink die. Wherever that line is, stay an equal distance away from it, and you'll have a nice highlight line that reflects the light just perfectly. Okay guys, when I'm shrinking, when I'm planishing, um, I got the piece folded up like this. And then spread it out, lift that up with our stomach a little bit. And that's the beginning of our piece. You see how much, and that's just a few minutes of shrinking on the power hammer. That's just, like I say, you said it's real time you saw that. We, we put a couple shrinks in there, we planched it out a little bit. Look how much shape we got in that piece. We're beginning to get that to, to go over. And there really isn't, I don't think, a more efficient machine to get your panel shaped like the power hammer. That is a fast way of shrinking. Uh, on this I'm going to use the power hammer and then by the time I get done with all the shrinking here this is going to need to be stretched out in here. You can see already it's taken off on me. You can stretch that with the power hammer. I find it's a lot easier to do in the wheel. A few passes through the wheel that stretches this out and the, and the piece lays down flat like it should and it's not all wavy. So. You're putting heavy shrinks here. This is going to feel it. This is going to need to be stretched out later. Uh, again, like I say, it's hard to show on the big piece because it's, it's, it's just so, so big. But you can see it on here what's going to happen. So, uh, if you guys like the power hammer videos and the sheet metal videos, I've got plenty more stuff to do sheet metal wise. Uh, it, it was starting to kind of really drag. Nobody was watching my sheet metal stuff after a while, so I kind of quit doing that. If you enjoy the power hammer, the pull max, the flanger, any of the sheet metal stuff I got, let me know. Put a, put a comment down below and let me know and I can make more sheet metal videos uh, for the guys who are interested. So, that's all I have for you today. Uh, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.